Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at an operating system called Slacks OS. It's Debian based and it's really simple to get going because it's a live CD. Um, I don't think there is actually an installer within this to install it on a hard disk. Uh, now a few interesting features about this system, the entire Slacks, well all the Slacks OS files are located within a single directory. This according to their website makes it simpler and easier to use. Um, it's also uh, based on Debian, as I already said, like Ubuntu, and it can run on very old machines, uh, such as a machine running an old Intel 686, and that's from 1995. Um, now, some of you may also know that as the P6 micro architecture. Uh, it's also designed to run on very sort of portable little netbooks. Um, and it has the, as you can see, the KDE 4 disk desktop environment, which basically means it's extremely simple to use. Um, even, obviously, my nan could know how to use this. Um, and it provides two main programs. So that's obviously a web browser, that is Chrome, a terminal, and they're both pre-installed. And it also comes with VLC Media Player. How good is that? So you can just install that by pressing yes. And it's just so simple to put together really. Uh, it also comes with this file manager, which I believe, yep, it's the PC, PC Man. I was about to say Pac-Man then, I don't know why. Um, PC Man FM 1.2.5 file manager also has uh, well if you're a windows person you'll know this is aeroglass transparency if you if I move this around against the leaves you can see that there and same for virtually all the other windows as well apart from chrome which obviously as we all know has its own little thing of it for itself um, now there's really not much else to this I mean we've got a fully functioning chrome which is nice and fast um, and I've given it lots of RAM because obviously Chrome likes RAM very much um, and the web browser works I mean you saw it install obviously VLC uh, and that took stuff from the web I think that was an apt get command so um, yeah as you can see Chrome works perfectly fine and I believe that's just about it for this system but I'm going to extend this video on a little bit because um, it also says, well, as I've already mentioned, it says it can run on very old machines, such as the Intel 686 from 1995. Now, I don't have an Intel 686, um, obviously, or a computer running on one, um, but I do have, as the name of my YouTube channel suggests, some very retro technology. But first, I'm going to be kind to it and run it on an XP machine. And then, if I can get it to work, uh, I don't know if it's got any USB ports. I've got a computer from, oh, what was it? I think it was 1992 or maybe a bit earlier. Uh, that is running on Windows 95. So we can say a little challenge. If I can, in fact, actually get the means to, ins well, at least get the live CD to boot up onto that computer. So, first things first, let's get the old computers out and let's begin. Right, so we, I've got three computers out. Um, I have got this Dell Inspiron 910 or Dell Mini 9. I've got this Windows, Windows Vista era computer over here, made in 2007, or I think it might be 2006 actually. And right over here I've got a Windows 95 era compa compact LTE something I think it ends with elite but um, I will put a annotation down at the bottom um, to obvious well at the bottom of the screen to obviously tell you the proper product number um, or model number rather so I have got the USB drive here and what shall we test it on first let's go with this one Right, so I'm just going to go into the BIOS and set the 
the SanDisk Cursor Glide USB stick as the top one. Exit saving changes. And any moment now. Right, so we're at the Slacks boot screen. Uh, shall we do copy to RAM, fresh start, or persistent changes? Uh, let's go with copy to RAM. Because why not? I'm just going to speed up the video here because this is most probably going to take a very long time. Right, so that hasn't actually taken a long time at all and it has booted up just fine. I'm really quite surprised uh, that it's done that properly. Let's see if everything loads up properly here. And it does. Shall we try to launch Chrome, for example? I don't think it can get anywhere with Chrome because it hasn't actually got um, the Wi Fi settings imported over from Vista. Um, So let's load that relatively quickly. Shall we try to go to Google? No. Thought not, um, but yeah, that was all a bit of a wild guess at whether that would work or not. Obviously, we've got the file manager, I'm not going to try VLC because I'll need to connect to the internet to download that. Um, calculator. I wonder what one plus two is. It's three, would you believe? So, yeah, obviously that works. Um, task manager, quite similar to the Windows task manager. Pretty good. Now, funny thing is, I did try to make this work a few other times, and it didn't work at all. It just went to the command line interface and stalled but it's actually working perfectly fine now weirdly um now let's go to helping about yeah everything loads quickly and it's straight off the ram and actually obviously ram is rapid memory so um yeah and there's i mean i've already demonstrated this os i'm just surprised that it's worked properly uh, now, one thing, how do you, oh, you just click anywhere around it and then it goes away. Well, that is really surprising. I didn't think that would work at all, but it actually has. So let's just boot this one up now. Can't remember whether I changed the bars, but it doesn't really matter because this one's got a built-in boot menu as well. Oh, yeah. USB storage first, then. Shall we try? Oh. It says exit for options, and then if you press that, it goes all wrong. So here is the logon. Now remember, when you're using a Linux terminal, I don't really use them at all. Um, if you type in root for the logon name, you can see the logon name. But for a password, oh, I think I might have typed that one wrong. You can see that there are no characters displayed. Uh, there aren't even any of them funny dots that go along the middle of the text. So that's just something to obviously look out for when you're typing a password in because it is completely normal. So if you press enter then you get logged into the terminal. Um, now obviously this is a live CD so sort of expect it to be like this. Now one command that I remember from the internet, I'm not sure if this is the correct command or not but I seem to believe it is. Um, start X, I believe that gets you to the desktop environment. The KDE one, anyway. Let's see if that works. Server terminated with error. <sighs> it tried to connect to a server. What on earth did it try to do that? 
Oh well. Um, I'm not going to bother with this because this is obviously not going to want to boot to the desktop. We didn't get any options at boots like we did with uh, the other Vista laptop. Um, so let's just, well, I'm going to put this down as a fail anyway. If it could boot from the RAM then it would most probably work. Even though it hasn't got much RAM it would just take a bit longer. So, mm, oh well. Um, Let's try with another laptop now. Right, so let's think about what other laptops I could use. Can't use that one down there, uh, underneath the Dell and Spron, because it has got a problem with its boot menu. It only ever wants to boot from its hard drive, it doesn't even want to boot from its optical drive, or oh, never mind the USB drives. I um, already tested the Vista one, and the Windows 95 one was, well, was a bit of a joke purely because I just wanted to see if it still works, which it mostly does, apart from some several um, CMOS errors, but that doesn't matter, and obviously that was made, I believe, in 1989, so that's before the age of these things, USB drives, so I'm not even going to bother with that. Uh, so let's try to dig around in my big drawer full of laptops to see if I can find anything else which might accept this. Uh, got a very dark screen on this one that even I'm struggling to see. USB memory is first, so that's what we want. Let's see if it will boot up properly on this one. I wonder if we'll get a GUI or whether it'll just go straight to the terminal. Oh, I think we might actually get to the GUI, maybe not. Um, And the A key doesn't work. Oh no, it does now. No, that's probably not going to work with that either. Um, so I won't bother. Anyway, I believe that is. Um, well, yeah, that hasn't worked at all. Um, well, one of them worked two of them didn't work and to be honest I don't know why it's just a bit irritating really uh, maybe it's just because some of them are too old even though they said it could run on hardware from uh, back in 1995 um, yeah not too brilliant but hey ho uh, it worked on one of them anyway and it worked perfectly well in uh, VirtualBox so can't complain about it too much. I do like the fact that it's so minimal. Um, obviously, that would be good for portability. Maybe it's just the case that it works better on more modern computers. But I'm not going to bother testing this on any more of my laptops, uh, so I might as well just reboot this now and call it a day. Uh, so anyway, thank you all very much for watching today. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to support the channel, you can do so not by giving it any money, but by simply subscribing to it to give me a bit more motivation to make new videos. Um, so, thank you all once again, and let's just reboot this. Thank you all once again, and until the next video, goodbye.